Okay class, we're about to start section 7.4, solving quadratic equations, completing the square. So far we have two methods for solving quadratic equations and we are going to add one. Our first method that we learned was factoring. Now this only works if this side of the equation can be factored and is set equal to zero. The square root method. This means that this side of the equation must be factored and it has to be squared and is equal to some number. That's the limitation of the square root method. Now completing the square, it works all the time, but it can and sometimes will get ugly. Now, the method of completing a square works by creating a perfect square in equations that did not originally fit the form for the square root method. What does, perf what does a perfect square of a binomial look like? Distribute the following. What pattern do you see? Okay, now we have x plus 6 parentheses squared. Now, we know this factors out to x plus 6 times x plus 6 because this parentheses is squared. Now, we can multiply this. We know we would take x times x plus x times 6 plus 6 times x, plus 6 times 6, using what is commonly called the FOIL method. Now, x times x, we know, gives us x squared. x times 6 gives us 6x. 6 times x gives us 6x. And 6 times 6 is 36. Now, we will have x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now let's look at this a little bit more deep. If you look here, this n number here is a positive 6. So we're basically dealing here with 6. Now what happens is this here. When we come here to this middle term, isn't 12 the same as 6 times 2? This number times 2. And isn't 36 the same as 6 times 6? So this number multiplied by itself. Just really think about it for a minute. Now, when we come here to the next problem, let me draw a little line here to separate them. Now, we know that we will write this as x minus 3 times x minus 3. Now, we will multiply. We will add x times x plus x times a negative 3 minus 3 times x minus 3 times a negative 3. Now this will give us x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. This will give us x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now remember we're looking at this number here which is negative 3. Now when we come here to this middle term isn't this just 2 times a negative 3? And isn't 9 just negative 3 times negative 3? So, let's go down here and talk about this pattern. In general, we can say that the parentheses x plus or minus n to the second power is the same as x squared plus or minus 2 times n times x plus n squared. Now remember, this number that we had up here is considered to be our n value. So we had negative 3 here also. Now if we look here, we kept our x squared, which we have here. Now we go to our n value. Our n for this problem here is positive 6. We're supposed to double that because 2 times n is doubling the n. So that should give us 12 times x. And then finally, we would take n squared. n is 6, and 6 squared is 36. And when we do the same thing here with negative 3, we come out with the same results. And then this is, well, this is actually known as a perfect square trinomial. Now, we scroll here to the second page. It says, solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. Now we have step 1. Write the equation in the form ax squared plus bx is equal to k. Now remember, what we're used to writing, just as a footnote, we're used to writing ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. 
our C here and this K here is the same thing. The C and the K is the same thing. It's just a constant. It's just that we would have to move what we commonly known as our C over here where the zero is. But it's called K as far as this is concerned. Now, step two, if A is not equal to one, divide both sides of the equation by A. We'll get to a problem like that. Step three, complete the square on the left side. Be sure to add to both sides of the equation. And step four, solve the equation by using the square root method. Okay, now let's go through and solve one problem. Let's look at A here first. First of all, we have our AX squared, our BX, but we need to move this K or this C over with the zero. So we'll subtract nine on both sides. So we have X squared plus eight X equals negative nine. Now, our lead coefficient is one, so we don't have to worry about dividing everything by A. So now we come here to the completing the square part. This is what we would do. You look here, at the value of b and you would divide b by 2 and then square it so in this case b is 8 so we would take 8 divided by 2 and square it 8 divided so we had x squared plus 8x plus we know 8 divided by 2 is 4 and 4 squared is 16 and we would add this 16 to the other side as well. Now, if you notice here, by us taking half of b and squaring it, we create, we create ourselves a perfect square trinomial, which we could rewrite as x plus 4 squared is equal to negative 9 plus 16 will give us a positive 7. Now, let's take another look here. 8 divided by 2, we know is positive 4 and it's squared. If you notice, this value here is also this value here. Okay, so now, our next step, we will just solve it by completing the square. So we'll take the square root of both sides. Well, actually, I'm sorry, we will, we will uh, solve this by taking the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, our next step is we're supposed to subtract 4 on both sides. So, we will subtract 4 here and subtract 4 here. So, our answer here will be x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 7. And we're done. Okay, now let's try this with b. Now, again, if you notice, we have ax squared and then we have our minus 2x plus 13 equals, equals 0. Now we know our b here is negative 2, and our c or our k is 13. So we'll subtract 13 on both sides. And we have x squared minus 2x, well actually it's supposed to be 0, is equal to negative 13. Let me take this little line out of here. Okay, so now... What we have here, we have our equation set up correctly. Now, since our a is 1, we don't have to go through and divide by a. But we have to take our value of b, which is negative 2, and divide it by 2 and square it. So it ends up being negative 1 squared, which we know is 1. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals negative 13 plus 1. Now, we have a perfect square trinomial here. In our parentheses, we have x, and since this negative 1 was squared, it would be x minus 1 squared is equal to negative 13 plus 1, which is a negative 12. Now, our next step, we will have to take the square root of both sides. So we have x minus 1 is equal to, now, since we are dealing with complex numbers as well, this is not undefined or impossible. We know the square root of negative 12 will give us a plus or minus i root 12. Now, our next step, let's add 1 to both sides. So we have x is equal to 1 plus or minus i root 12. 
Now we know that 12 has a perfect square in it. So we need to bring that out. So we had x is equal to one plus or minus i. The highest perfect square in 12 is four. And we know we will have the square root of three left over. The square root of four is two. So our answer would be one plus or minus the square root of four is two and two times i is two i square root three. And this is our final answer. Okay, now we come to the next page. Example two, solve the following by completing the square. Okay, now we know the first thing we need to do here is subtract three on both sides. So we have x squared plus seven x is equal to negative three. Now we look at our b value because our a is one. So we'll go off to the side and take seven divided by two and that's squared, which will give us 49 over four. So we will add x squared plus 7x plus 49 over 4 equals negative 3 plus 49 over 4. Now we would do our parentheses here. We will have x plus 7 over 2, parentheses squared, is equal to, now negative 3 plus 49 over 4, you could put in your calculator, and it will give you 37 over 4. Now we have to take the square root of both sides. So now we will have x plus 7 halves is equal to the square root of 37 over 4, which is the same as the square root of 37 all over 2. Because remember, the square root of 4 is 2. Now our next step is we need to subtract. Actually, it should be plus or minus here and here. So now we have to subtract 7 halves on both sides. So we will have x is equal to a negative 7 halves plus or minus the square root of 37 all over 2. Now, now since they have the same denominator, we can combine them. This would be negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 32 all over 2. And that is your final answer. Now we look here at B. We have 3x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. The first thing that we need to do here, of course, we need to get our K or C to the other side. So we will add 2 on both sides. So we add 3x squared minus 3x equals 2. Now if you notice, our A is not 1. So we must divide every last term in this problem by A, which happens to be positive 3. So that would be x squared minus x is equal to 2 thirds. Now we know this number in front of x is 1, so it would be negative 1 over 2. And that's squared because our b is negative 1. So this will end up giving us a positive 1 4. So we add x squared minus x plus 1 4 equals 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. So now if we would end up with x minus, because this was negative, one half squared is equal to two thirds plus one fourth, which would give us 11 twelfths. You could use your calculator. Now we would take the square root of both sides, and this would give us x minus one half is equal to plus or minus. Now we could separate this. We have the square root of 11. And we have to look at our denominator. The square root of 12 has a, has a perfect square in it, which we did in a previous problem. A square root of 4, a square root of 3. So now we will have x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2 square root 3. Now, we need to get rid of the square root of 3 in our denominator. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. And we add x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 33 all over 6. Because the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3 times 2 is 6. Now we add 1 half on both sides. And we have x is equal to 1 half plus or minus the square root of 33 all over 6. And this is our final answer.